Hello, everyone. Today is Thursday, June 19th, 2014, and this is the week in charts. Dramatic pause. <laughs> there we go. I know I say this every week, but this week I'm serious. We've got a little, lot to cover. Some going to get a little jacked up. Oh, it's a Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew is back in supply now. Thanks to my wife. Oh, good stuff. All right. Enough of that nonsense. Here's a disclaimer screen. All predictions are about the future, and a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. This is part of the show where I beg for a review on Amazon. I come right out and ask for a review. A lot of you guys and girls send me some very nice compliments, which I thank you very much for. But if you don't mind, put them up on Amazon, even if you agree with everyone. I'm not going to go into too many details this week. But as I often say, there's some malignant people out there that review the reviewers. Uh, what are we going to talk about? Well, I want to talk about discretion entries. I got asked to cover this because it's some. Um, uh, we had a situation occur earlier this week, and I'll flesh all that out in a little while. Uh, one thing I was thinking about, I woke up thinking about today, is the uh, doing the right thing, and how in markets you have to do the right thing, but sometimes the market can be a really bad teacher. I'm going to flesh all that out. No. Um, if there's anything you want me to uh, cover, we'll try to get to it today. As far as individual stocks, I see a couple of you guys already asking questions about stocks. No problem, but uh, why don't you hold off on your stock questions for when we get to the um, to the markets. We should have plenty of time today. I know I have a lot to cover, but I should be able to get through it pretty quickly. Also, if you don't mind, if you're new to the show, ask about one stock at a time. So if you want to know about XYZ, and uh, ABC, etc. Just put XYZ and hit your enter key, and then put ABC. Because when I come, what's going to happen is I'll see these, and there might be ten of these in a row, and I'm not going to remember which ones I covered and which ones I didn't. So you might only get one out of ten stocks covered. But if you want all ten covered, just hit hit return after each one. Bam, 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 and we'll try to get to each and every one of them. Usually we get to. I'd say about 95% of all the stocks. Um, ideally, you want the stock to be trending and set up. Um, I, th there's a lot of you guys that are a little bit newer to the market, so it's okay to say, is this trending? And a lot of times I'll say yes, and, uh, and then we move on. So ideally, you want a stock to be trending and set up, but uh, sometimes I get a lot of questions on, is the stock trending? And that's okay, too. All right, let's hop into this. Let's talk about discretion. And the entry thing really confuses a lot of people. So let's clear this up. And and I've talked about this quite a bit in the past. I won't spend a, a lot of time on it because we have a lot of prior webinars where a tremendous amount of time has been spent. And that's why, um, I mean, not to soft sell or pimp you on them, but I've got those flash drives out there. And we've got 100, you got 120 hours on the flash drives. You're going to have another 30 hours when I make this month's or this half a year available and we do cover this stuff over and over again. So if you want to cover it in painstaking detail, go in and watch 120 hours worth of shows. So it's out there. Um, but let's cover it as quickly as possible. And this is straight from layman's. If you are to, let's say here's your entry on a stop, stock, okay? Sometimes I'll say stop, use the word stop interchangeably because that's a, it's a slip because sometimes you can use a stop entry. Uh, but that's after the market opens. So you do have to let the market open. People like, Dave, I don't want to watch the screen all day. I suggest you do not watch the screen all day. But try to at least watch the open, okay? Because 95% of all your discretion is going to probably happen, or 99%, right around that open, at least when you're dealing with an entry, okay? If the market gaps above your entry, okay, and the market comes right back in, you should avoid that entry, okay? 
Now, the goal is not to beat the system. Let's say it drops below the entry down here. You don't try to buy it as it's dropping. Okay, if it keeps dropping, oh, I'm going to get in right here. Dave says get in at 4 bucks a share. Now it's at 350 I just beat the system by 50 cents. No, it's not what our goal is with a little discretion. Our goal is if this thing gaps open, it's his last little gasp, and then begins to die. Our goal is to avoid a bad trade or a potentially bad trade. Okay. Now, if the gap is kind of minor and the stock doesn't turn right back around and it starts to rally after a little tiny bitty gap, you've got to kind of squint your eyes, then by all means go with it. Okay. We're talking about an obvious gap that is obviously well above the entry and then the stock comes right back in. Again, that's a no-brainer. You should be able to recognize these after a few times and avoid them once you begin to see them in real time. Now, let's say it does gap open, and it's not like way up here somewhere, stupid, like way up here, well above this prior high, okay? And let's say it kind of meanders a little bit, but then it begins to rally. What I recommend in a case like that, as long as, if you're trading a generic pullback, like a generic pullback, as long as you have some reversion to the mean move left, meaning some distance from here to here, if it's somewhere in here, then you have to, it's, it's a go or no go decision, okay? Uh, but again, as long as you have plenty of room in there, then it becomes a go decision. So once this opening range is established, then your new entry is above the opening range. Now, if this is a, an extreme gap, if it gaps way above the prior high, then just let it go. Or if it gaps like, let's say, right at that prior high and, and it's a fairly deep pullback you're trading, then then let it go. You don't look for a second entry in a case like that. Okay. Now let's take a look at a recent example. Now this one's a little tricky because this is a first thrust type of setup. And with the first thrust, we're not waiting for that nice little deep pullback, nice correction to shake some people out. If you wait for this with a first thrust, it becomes quite often a snooze, you lose, type of situation, okay? Because markets, sometimes when they make a sharp reversal like this one did, okay, they just have a little tiny correction and then bam, it's off to the races. So this, you really don't have much of that reversion to the mean move in here. In fact, the entry was actually fairly close to the prior high. Okay, this isn't, yeah, this is the scale. Okay, and it's fair—it's all fairly liberal parameters because we're trying to catch a major bottom in this particular case. Okay, so let's look at what happened. Your entry was here. Notice that the opening tick turned into the exact tick of the day. So if your chart looks like that, that's a no-brainer. Always, you want to always avoid a stock that looks like that. Okay. And then maybe you have a new entry above that high, okay? And notice that it did sell off, and the next day it kind of stabilized a little bit. But then the next day, guess what? We still have a first thrust set out. Now, mechanically, the portfolio triggers in at the opening gap price. And that's the hypothetical portfolio, but that's the portfolio I track, so people can't say it doesn't work. If I could show things work on a mechanical basis, then, then they'll work even better with discretion. So coming into, was it today or yesterday? I forget. I told my peeps, hey, it's set up again. I didn't put it back in as an official setup because I'm already tracking it as an official setup, even though the reality of it is I will avoid a trade like that and then look for a second entry and then uh, so it was yesterday I guess it triggered so yesterday it re-triggered and then took off now in this particular case the re-trigger was the same trigger as the original trigger that won't always be the case so if you a lot of times the stock will do this pull back take off again it's like set up so this let's say you get that second setup you go with that second setup and you're gonna have a different parameters that you would have back here. But the way this one shook out, 
it's kind of cool the way I did it. And then it's opening gap reversal came back in. And the next day it sets up again. So you had that thrust all the way up to the opening gap reversals there. But then there's your little bitty uh, pullback here, giving you pretty much the same exact entry right there. Okay. So that's the second shot at this one. And then that time, as you can see yesterday, it just kind of banged through the uh, stop. I'm sorry, I said stop again. Banged through the entry, and it kept on going. Now, Fred has a question. Let's see what Fred wants to know. I know you will be discussing ANV OGR earlier this week. So what if it opens at 369 and sits there for the next five minutes or so? Do you need to wait for ticks higher before entering? Okay. Uh, yes. Yes. His question is this. Well, it's, it's, he's got more questions, but let's just answer that part right there. Okay. Let's say you're watching this stock and your entry is 360 and it opens right here at 369. And it stays at 369, okay? So what do you do now? Well, you just hang out a little bit and see what happens, okay? Now, if it's at 369 an hour from now, or let's not even go that far, okay? Let's say, let's say this is an intraday chart. This is 369. This is the tick here, okay? And let's say it just kind of does this. It, it never gets back above that 369. And let's say that's five minutes later or even 10 minutes later, however you want to look at it, okay? Well, at this particular point in time, you could say, all right, I got to go train some dogs. I got to go, Fred, what do you do? You manage portfolios, private portfolios, or do you um, do you train dogs or build buildings or do something else? <laughs> um, anyway, while Fred's uh, thinking about what he does, after these first five to ten minutes, if this is a, a go, still a go position, so let's just forget about A and B for a second. Let's say you had a pullback. You had an entry here. Let's say a gap to here. and just kind of sat there for a little while. Then you go off to, he's a life coach. Oh, okay, cool. Awesome. That's even better, okay? Then some of these, uh, that's, uh, I'm going to add life coach to my list of great things to do. So he's like, you know what, I've got a, I've got some coaching to do. This thing's just kind of sitting here, but it's not that big of a gap at all. You know what, I'm going to look to get a re-enter above this opening range. So I'm going to put in a stop, S-T-O-P, order here, and I'm going to go about my life coaching, okay? So you don't have to sit there and watch it all day and wait for a trigger. If you have, in a minor case like, like this, if it gaps above that entry, and it's not too big of a deal, and it just kind of sits there or begins to die out a little bit, your new entry becomes above that opening range, okay? Let's say for, for just um, illustration purposes, let's say for some reason we're looking to get it way down here. Let's say it gaps to about 360, just kind of sits there. Well, you know, I've got clients to deal with. i got to go do some life coaching. So let me just put it a stop right here at about 365 or something and see if I get stopped in to the position by the end of the day. And a lot of times it'll just die and you'll avoid a completely uh, losing position by doing that, okay? All right, okay, let's see what else he says. After staying at the open for five minutes or so, it could gap up, or did you miss the initial 4 to 5% advance if you're waiting for the next tick higher? My point being, it could just as easily gap up rather than go down, and if you wait for another tick higher, you might miss the initial advance higher. Um, if it gaps open on you, you miss that gap move anyway, unless you were in from the day before or whatever. But that's that, that doesn't make any sense, I guess. Let me just rewind that. If you're looking to enter a stock and it gaps open, then you miss that move anyway if, if the gap's above your entry. Now, if it gaps open and it's not above your entry, there's nothing to do. It, sometimes that does happen. Sometimes, uh, sometimes let's say your entry's here. Sometimes it might gap open it here and then come back in. Well, if it's not to your original entry, it's nothing to do. Okay, but you miss the move obviously to the gap. Now I'm not sure what you're saying. If if you do have once the market is open and the stock is traded, provided it's a fairly liquid stock like this, let's say you put it a stop above the market. Then if that market begins to rally, you're going to get stopped in, okay? 
So you're saying a gap on top of a gap? That's probably not going to happen. Okay, that's that's a very uh, nearly uh, impossible situation, I think. Okay, you might miss advance higher. Thanks for addressing this issue. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, I doubt you have a gap on a gap. Okay, subsequent move higher from one sixty nine to one seventy four. Uh, what stock are we on, uh, Fred? We're still in A and V, or we're in something else? Okay. Um, okay, I get it. Very likely A and V. Okay. Okay. Now, j just to wrap up discretion, and if there's any more questions on discretion, feel free to ask them. Uh, of course, anytime you add a layer of decisions to the process, now. You know me. I, I preach a lot. A lot of a lot of weeks. You know, week after week after week, I'll come in and talk about making fewer, not more decisions, right? But every now and then, a little discretion. You have to add that decision back into the process, an extra decision into the process, and make that decision. And anytime you make a decision, some different outcome could come from that decision. Okay. Had you just bought A and V, you'd be up nicely now. Even though you had the opening gap, you'd be up a little bit. Better than poking the eye, I think. Um, and sometimes a trade could get away from you. Maybe you'll say, you know what, opening gap reversal, Dave says avoid it. Next day, it gaps open 10 points or something, and you're, you're not in the trade. That could happen. But more often than not, a little discretion when it comes to entries like this is going to work in your favor, and you are going to miss uh, some losing trades, which is good. Uh, a pure opening gap reversal, again, is a no-brainer. Your entry's here, the gap is here, it comes right back in. The chart looks like a little, what do you call that, a little hook or something? A little bracket, a little hook? That's kind of a no-brainer, okay? Now, the go or no-go decision on, on uh, can be tough on large gaps. So you got, like, let's say you got a nice deep pullback, you're trading that, and you're looking to get in about right here, and if it gaps up right here, then that's a tough decision to make, and I don't have... The answer for you, it's one of those Judge, uh, what's his name, Potter Smith or whatever his name is. I'll know when I see it, okay? But, yeah, if you're looking to capture that big reversion to the mean move from a deep pullback and that move happens overnight and the stock gaps open, then, unfortunately, you might just have to let it go, okay? That becomes a darned if you do and darned if you don't situation. Okay, if you let it go, all of a sudden this thing rallies all day. It goes up a bazillion points, right? If you hop in, that reversion to the mean move, that overbought market has over exhausted itself already, and then it implodes. So that's a tough decision. Now, a little tiny gap above your entry, so what? Okay, so don't stress over a little bitty gap. So here's your entry. Gaps are like right there, and then it becomes, starts coming back in. I don't stress over that too much, okay? If it's just a little tiny gap, all right? That's no big deal. Uh, whether you take this trade or not, it doesn't matter, okay? You could say, well, it's a little bit of a gap. It came right back in. I'm going to put a second entry in and then go about my life. That's fine. But don't stress too much. If it's just a few pennies above your entry, probably as if you need me to give you a, a go or no go, just take it. Just take the trade. Don't stress out. But if you happen to notice that it comes right back in, then by all means, put in a second entry, okay? Now, don't become a deer in the headlights if it, especially, this is why you don't want to stress too much over a little gap, okay? Let's say gaps open right there, and you say, oh, well, let me wait to see if it reverses. And then, you know, it, ticks, it has one or two ticks down, and then it starts doing this. And you're like, Oh, uh, uh, oh, uh, let me see if it reverses. It, it, it just keeps going up, and then all of a sudden, you miss a really good trade. So in a tiny gap, you almost just want to go with it, okay? Because this doesn't be the. This is like, it's just sort of like an entry. It's not like the market has some pent up euphoria and it's way up here and due to implode right back down. This is just a little bit of excitement coming into the day, and that could actually be. A good thing. So as a general rule, I would just blindly take them if it's a little tiny gap, okay? Now, the goal is not to beat the system with lower entries. The goal is to avoid a potential bad trade. Again, let's say if you have something that market gaps open, it starts coming back in, and your entry is like right here. 
The goal is not to try to buy it down here. The goal is to try to avoid a losing trade altogether. Okay. And your new trade, once again, your new intraday entry is above that opening range. Okay. All right. Yeah, we've beat the dead horse on this many times, but it's always good. I always like, you know, if, you have, if you've been in enough of these shows, and this is why I'm proud of these shows, because we take whatever's current and we look at it and we learn, okay? And now you can go back two and a half years because we started, I started cataloging all these shows. And you can see what happened two years ago in the market. And then if you, if you, for free, you can go back over 10 years if you want to download and, and, and uh, study the service archives. But with these shows, we, whatever happens, if we get open to gap reversals one weekend, one week, I should say, we talk about them. Last week, we had a stock that came down and just went, <laughs> gave, the, gave the stop, STOP, a little kiss, and then turned around and went right, right back up. So we talked about that. So seeing all these things unfold in real time, I think, is, uh, is pretty cool. Um, this morning, I woke up thinking about doing the right thing and how the market is a um, bad teacher, okay? Now, which way does this market appear to be headed? It's a little choppy. You're missing the scaling, but let's just, uh, let's just say that the move from here to here is fairly substantial, given the underlying instrument, okay? Well, it looks like it's headed down. I mean, come on. It's like uh, everybody knows Pinocchio is a bad motivational speaker. Everybody knows that, okay? And then look what happened. The market turned around and went right back up. Now, here's another example. And to those of you who read the book, you can see a little bow tie here. Little, kind of had a little first thrust in here and a little sell-off. But then you got an official bow tie here, a little pullback in here, okay? And what happened? Well, the market turned around. I don't think you got anything on the boat side. They just kept pulling back and then went straight back up, okay? Now, if you go in, which we'll do in just one second, and look at the market, at the indices, that was a, I just showed you the NASDAQ and the Russell, and that's just one little snapshot. It actually happened like twice in a row recently, but I didn't want to bore you with too many charts. I just want to show you that following your technicals is the thing to do. And it, it all kind of boils down to the ABC thing I often talk about. And I'm actually going to probably bring it up yet again in a few minutes, okay? And if a market is going to go from A to C, It's going to pass through B along the way, provided that B is less than A, okay? So if a market begins to drop and you start getting signals right around B, then what do you do? Well, all things constant, I suppose. You take them because how do you know this market isn't going to go to C? And you think about that, okay? And then conversely, A, B, C. As a trend follower, provided you can get setups around the B part, because the market has to go to B to get to C, then you might want to take those setups as a good little trend follower. Does it always work? No. And guess what? The reason that it works is because sometimes it don't. And you need to write that down. Now, it's easy to get a little philosophical after you've been doing this for a long, long time. I'm not saying, you know, still drop an F-bomb. Okay, I dropped an F-bomb pre-open, right? And then I realized I just wasted some energy on that. But you're still going to drop F-bombs. That's life, and that's getting frustrated with the markets and all. But it gets easier throughout the years when you get faked out because you're able to say, you know what, I did the right thing on that fake out. The market really looked like it was going to crash. So I took the, some invasive action. I let my stops get taken out. I didn't make a major life decision, life change or whatever, sell a home, put the money in the market or anything like that. But I let my stops get stopped out, and I started nibbling a little bit of the short side. And, hey, market turned right back around, went straight back up. So what? You're going to be wrong sometimes. Get used to it, okay? Doctors have a hard time 
trading because if half their patients died, they probably wouldn't be in business long, I guess, depending on their practice, unless 90% of the patients die anyway. I mean, we're all going to die anyway, but you know what I'm saying. And if half the bridges fell down for engineers, you wouldn't be an engineer very long, but you could also be wrong quite a bit in trading. Um, active management has underperformed since the lows of 2009. This was in my column a few weeks back. But this is to be expected. Anyone who has kept pace with the market the last few years should be questioned because they will likely have not made any moves which would or will protect their portfolio when the inevitable bear market occurs. And that's uh, Judd Duttery, I hope I got his name right, from Standy and Management, which is, um, he's on the team over there with Greg Morris. And they're running, I don't know, $5 billion, $7 billion, enough. And I like what um, Judd says, because I couldn't get a one-day chart. A one-day chart, uh, I couldn't get the compression right uh, with TC. And I didn't have time to go create one with Metastock. But, uh, so I used a two-day chart, which is not quite as impressive as a one-day chart. But you could see we had a pretty good run in 2009. A little bit of correction here, but not too, too bad. But then look what this market did. This market had a pretty serious rollover, and then it kind of meandered for a while. So it looked a little ominous there. But if you're just buying and holding, you just hang on, right? And then look what happened in 2011. It kind of went sideways, formed a big picture looking top, and it did begin to implode, okay? But the implosion was somewhat mitigated, and then it starts to rally up again. Now, notice that when it did implode, it actually took out the prior peak in here. Okay, so that should be a big red flag. But then it went straight back up. Had a pretty serious correction here, came back below its prior peak. Again, that should be questioned. At least you should let your stops get taken out and possibly squeeze off a short or two. And then once again, it made a marginal new high begin to roll over, okay? And then it took off, and there's been some zigs and zags along the way. And it looked a little ominous not too far, not too long ago. But not nearly as bad as the peas and the Russell, as we just showed. And if you look at the peas and Russells in a more recent standpoint. So whether or not you, you take evasive action up here, that could be debated, at least in hindsight, of course, with the peas. But if you didn't do anything doing these major corrections in here, then I think I think Judd's right. I think you're you should be questioned. Your mentality should be questioned. So if somebody did buy and hold that entire period, when the inevitable bear market does come along, God forbid, but when, not if, okay, they're gonna they're gonna be a really hurting pop. Hey, Dave, so you want the stock to continue to trade in direction before taking your position rather than trading weakness? Absolutely, Howard. Yeah, getting back to that, um, that we were talking about, the uh, you always buy on strain. We should make a, uh, I should make a little catchy phrase. Buy on strain, sell on weakness. Buy on strain, sell on weakness. I'll figure out. Sell when they slide, buy when they glide. <laughs> How's that? Okay. Um, but, yeah, you don't want to try to beat the system. You always want to be in sync with the market at least the moment you make your trade. The moment afterwards, who cares? Okay. Dave, what do you mean who cares? I care. Well, there's nothing you could do about it. If you follow your rules, there's nothing to do about it, and nothing you can do about the direction of the market. Okay. So the moment you make your trade, then you you stick with it, good, bad, or indifferent. Okay, but you always want to enter that when you that moment you enter. If you're buying, you want to buy strength. If you're selling, you want to be selling weakness. You're not trying to catch a falling knife, and you're not trying to pick a top. And if conditions are good and you come in, you got a plethora of setups and you pick the, what you think is the best of the best 
and the sector action is there and the market's in good shape and the market's rallying day after day after day after day, then buying on that strength is a thing to do and you're going to do really well and you'll be surprised how many times you enter and then it just triggers or well obviously it triggers if you enter and it just doesn't look back okay now a lot of times it won't and that strength sometimes will be the, the last of the strength but at least going in you know that it's strong and you're buying on that strength I'm not going to bore you too much uh, this week and talk about IPOs I think uh, go in if you get a chance uh, for those of you who weren't here and those of you who were if you go to my website under um, let's see, is this it? if you go into free videos right here I put last week's we could charts up there so you can go in and watch that so go in and click on this one and then I did a lot of uh, long discussion on IPOs in, in the prior weeks I did also but uh, this one is absolutely free so just right click and download that, that when you get a chance I wouldn't do it now because it'll kill your um, bandwidth but anyway I talked about the last bull market and IPOs and what I meant by that just real briefly without covering all of it is that back at last fall I saw this unbelievable bull market and IPOs right around the time I was putting together my stock selection webinar so the IPOs became a bigger part than I originally attended of the stock selection webinar and then I really got to thinking I really need to expand upon that further and do something with IPOs uh, on an educational standpoint I've, I've always done stuff with them on a private level but just because of the massive performance and my big concern was is this the last bull market and IPOs and the answer is no and since then we've had a continuation of the bull market in IPOs and it's been pretty amazing so go ahead and watch last week's video on that and then I just thought it was kind of cool this is one that I personally took last week and if you look on the website you'll see that um, this is why I'm making this one public not that I, I make all trades public but if you go under IPO webinar it's kind of cool because um, uh, one of my clients Gloria came in and, and she took it based on the pattern that we talked about in the stock selection webinar which we're going to talk about obviously on July 12th in, in the webinar the IPO webinar but anyway this is pretty cool and I can't show the, you the exact entry because you smart people in here will figure out how to reverse engineer it but so far so good on that one so Gloria and I having a good time uh, with that uh, now even if this is the last, so to speak, bull market in IPOs, like I said last week, I'm not going to spend too much time on this this week, but like I said last week, there's going to be new fads in the future, and there's going to be new technology. In fact, that's what's got to be so exciting is the technology is moving so fast that I think that, uh, did my cage just slip out? Did, did I say fast? Real fast. <laughs> this commercial for weight loss that they interview all these ladies, or what they're asking, but how how fast do you want to lose weight? Two weeks, you know, three weeks. And then they, this one very large woman, they ask her, how, how fast do you want to lose weight? And she goes, real fast. So anyway, uh, technology is moving real fast. So there's going to be new technology. There's certainly going to be fads. Um, it, it, you never know where or, or it's going to come from. But the great thing about IPOs is that the, the ABC pattern pretty much works in fact I'm gonna actually call I think I'm thinking about calling one buy at B okay if you think about it, it's a B C it's a technician's dream and so I'm gonna call a pattern B A B buy at B I think it works well, in fact I know it works pretty good I've been looking at that for about 10 years um, and at the least what will happen we talked about the fly and the die which I think I have a slide in here on that I think those will continue to exist there will be some initial euphoria. There will be some manipulation to push these um, IPOs higher. And then after the lockup period expires or the reality begins to set in, they, they die. I call them a fly and a die. And then, of course, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago, and, and the second best time is today. So learn about IPOs now, and then you'll be able to trade them in the future. And 10 years from now, you might thank me. Uh, really big. So one of the big picture patterns, the big picture pattern number two, I've identified four main patterns with IPOs. And this is probably the most common, the fly and the die. And there's a 
plethora of reasons why this occurs. And, and like we said last couple of weeks, we're trading sardines, okay? So you have to trade these, and you got to get out before they begin to stink. But that enthusiasm begins to wane. The manipulation can only uh, last for so long, too. That's one thing that I haven't really discussed that much, and, and I will in, in lengthy detail. And so, but anyway, the, 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 the manipulation can only last so long. And then you have lockup periods that expire on a variety of levels, depending on uh, who you are as an insider. And so sometimes that sardine does uh, begin to roll over and die. But this price, this wild enthusiasm phase and this fly phase can be so substantial. So what? You make so much money so fast, real fast. Who cares if you get knocked out on a little bit? Anyway, on my home page, you can find out some more about the webinar. Uh, the promise pays, okay? So it's the promise of the future, and that's why I've got that big, long title about the promise, capitalizing on the promise of the future. Uh, some breakout specials can work, uh, special strategies can work quite well. I think the market conditions will dictate them, okay? And right now, we're still in an IPO bull market, so it's not over yet, and that's the beauty of it. And God forbid, I hope it doesn't end in the, you know, within the next month before I can get this, the webinar out. But I don't think it will. I think we're still in an IPO bull market for now. And there will be others, don't worry. But market conditions can dictate, and I will caution you that these breakout strategies, which are printing money right now in the IPOs, I, I, even though I think the bull market continues, I think they'll continue for now to print money, but when conditions get a little iffy in the overall market, I would be willing to bet that those breakout strategies aren't going to work quite as well. And then money management is key. Once last last thought on this is buy the fly and sell before the die. Jonathan says, Dave, are you saying you base your IPO decision partly on how much a promise you sense the company office? Ah. Uh, there's not a quick answer for that, but okay. My my here's my here's my canned answer on that. The market is the final arbiter. Okay, I don't care what the company is doing. Okay, the market is the final arbiter, but the technical patterns suggest that people are believing in the company. Okay. And there is some promise in the company. So the market being the final arbiter, that's what I'm basing it on. And that's where you get these big rallies off the promise. And, and more often than not, you get the fly and then the die. Okay. So I, I'm going to stop short of analyzing what the company does. But there are specific, without getting into any too, with too much details, there are specific times where you might want to to at least know what the company does and decide whether or not they're splitting the atom. And, you know, even if it's a food stock, it still could become the next fad. But, like, there's a pizza company out there. I'm probably going to use an example as an example. It's like they make pizza. It's like, you know, I don't know. It, it might turn into the next greatest pizza ever. If, the, if, the, if it sets up, then I'm going to take the setup because the market's the final arbiter. But anything less than an ideal setup, then you might want to question what's going on with the company and question what that promise is. Okay, but even in something that you're, even if it's something you don't believe in and don't think it's going to be great, if you get a great setup, then you take it. And, and the example that I've used throughout these uh, webinars over the years was Lulamon set up once, and I made fun of them because they make yoga clothes. Well. It went up about 40% over the next week, and I was pretty uh, pretty aggravated. So that was a very painful lesson for me, and not keeping my little technician hat on. You know, that was a confusing the issue with facts thing that I often preach about. Have you noticed that IPOs in hot sectors, uh, in parentheses, energies yield better results? Yes. I do, and yes, I have, and we are long rice right now because, why are we long rice? Well, because energies are doing well, 
And rice has the word energy in its name, okay? And so far, so good. It's which, you know, let's draw an arrow. Which way is it headed? So, yeah, absolutely, Jonathan. Yep, rice is really cooking. <laughs> Okay, uh, let me wrap up these slides. Got a couple of announcements. I don't want to soft sell too much in here. Um, the uh, by the way, I got asked. I get asked this. I got asked this question two or three times last week. Um, the if you get the stock selection webinar, I'm throwing in everything with that. Okay, so you get the webinar, you get a year of the trading service, and plus the IPO webinar free. Okay, so you get a lot of a lot of good stuff for that. Okay. Um, and again, if you just go to my website, click on the IPO webinar, and there's a lot of information here on what I'm going to be covering. And there's going to be follow up sessions too. So, what we'll do is kind of like we did in the stock selection webinar, not necessarily every week, but over a course of uh, a couple of months, we'll uh, have some follow up webinars. And what I will do is I'll show you what I'm picking, uh, what I like. And what I found, and then, and of course, there's going to be some follow-up questions, and I'm going to field those uh, during that time. Um, so again, if you get the stock selection webinar, you get the IPO webinar free. You can get the IPO webinar in and of itself, of course. And I think that's about it. Check out the flash drives; you get a chance. Try the veal, okay? <laughs> All right, let's hop into the charts. Enough of that stuff. Okay, just give me, you, you want to ask about individual issues, go ahead and start asking now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cover the overall market first, and then we'll, um, I'll hop into the individual issues. All right, let's start with the P's as we normally do. Oh, I had it. Oops. Okay, um, S and P five hundred. It's kind of cool that uh, it was kind of meandering along, or or sort of working its way higher. It began to accelerate higher on a micro level. Had a nice little pullback, and then so far has rallied out of that pullback, today notwithstanding. Um, it always amazes me in markets. A lot of times you get this big up day, then you get a pause day, and then you get another big up day following. Same thing happens on the downside. It seems like logically, and I know logic doesn't often apply, as often preached, but logically it seems like you have a big up day and another big up day right behind it. And, and instead, you know, what's amazing, what always amazes me is you have this huge update. Like everybody, their brother has to buy stocks. The next day it's like, eh, okay. But so far, so good with the S&P. Uh, just off of all-time highs. Back to chart way out. You certainly can't argue with that. NASDAQ looks pretty good, too. My only problem, and I don't want to pick it apart too much because I, I want it to go higher. But my only problem is it's made this V-shaped recovery at a high level. Ideally, you want to see markets sort of consolidate, maybe by going sideways and then make a new leg higher. My only problem with these V-shaped recoveries is that sometimes by the time the market gets all the way back up to its new highs, it's already overbought, okay? And it's hard for it to sustain the momentum. In other words, it's hard for it to mount a leg on top of another leg. Whereas like at the P's, we had that nice sideways base. And as I said forever, if it does break out, at least we got a nice base for it to launch off of. So we had what, about three or four months where it just went absolutely sideways and now we're launching off that base. So that's pretty cool. Unfortunately, NASDAQ's got that V-shaped look to it. But hey, it's, it's at multi-year highs and if it could get off its butt for the rest of the day and just rally a little bit it'll be it'll stay at multi-year highs okay uh, let's take a look at the Russell the Russell's kind of bringing up the rear 
Uh, on a micro level, it had a thrust at a pullback. Uh, I'm not a big fan of trading a, a pullback within a big picture range, okay? And that's something that I probably should flesh out a little bit, okay? We have a range established in the Russell between 108 and 120, okay? Now, if you're way down at, let me put up like a weekly chart or something. If you're way down here, then yeah, at, at these multi-year lows or 10-year lows or whatever, then I'm looking to play that transition. I'm not as excited about playing a transition when a market is way up at these high levels. And as I wrote the column this morning, I got asked in a webinar, not my webinar, one that, that I occasionally uh, pop into, Doug Newberry's show, um, Doug and Bill McKinley's show. And, uh, you know, way down here around 3,900 or 4,000 or whatever, I was asked, where would I be willing to buy this market? And it's like, well, not until it starts making new highs will I be in, become interested in this market. And that's why I'm, I'm constructive again on the NASDAQ. Okay, Even though I know it's a V-shaped recovery to high levels, but it's like it would have to go all the way back to new highs. I'm not trying to buy it anywhere in between when it's at high levels like this. Okay, And maybe I need to break out my pen for that. I don't know if that's going to cause a lot of confusion or not. Let's uh let's break out the pen one more time. Okay. If a market is at high high levels, then I might be looking to play a transition if it begins to roll over. Okay. If it does this, I'm not looking to really play these transitions at these high levels. Okay. So if you got a big range, oops. If you got a big, huge range in a market like this, then somewhere in the middle, I'm not looking to play so much, okay, if it's coming off of these major highs in here. Now, down here off the major lows, I'm looking to play there. And obviously, I'm looking to play some pullbacks along the way. But I'm not looking to play once it establishes a big range. In general, I'm going to stay out of that range. And that's why I'm not seeing a whole lot of setups right now. Because some of those technology areas like biotech and all, they did just, just that. They sold off, and now they're trying to come back, okay? But they're, like, coming back at these in these ranges. And what happens is you got some trading back here, so you might have a little setup that looks okay over here at the micro level, but there's a little bit of overhead resistance. And that's why I'm just not a big fan. Once a market establishes a big old wide range, I want to see it get out of that range, okay? And that's what's going on with the Russell 2000, or as we affectionately call it, the Rusty, okay? So it's kind of turning around within this big old range, but for all intents and purposes, it's up, it's down, it's down, it's up. It's still in that range. So we want to see it get out of that range, obviously. Now, things are shaping up. Gold stocks looking fantastic. Okay, and but David, that's off the middle of the range. Well, not exactly. Settle down, Beavis. That's really when you back the chart way out. You have the mother of all head and shoulder bottoms, and this is the beauty of having all the archives of these shows. Is you'll go in and see that we talked about the mother of all head and shoulder bottoms in gold. Okay, in the past. But it's not until you begin to get signals that you want to take some sort of action. And now we're beginning to get a bow tie here, okay? And while we're here, somebody wanted me to cover GDX. Let me just do that real quick. I'd rather, I'd rather cover GDXJ. Well, let's take a look at GDX. Well, GDX looks like gold itself because gold, GDX is the gold miners, okay? And, again, you have the mother of all head and shoulder bottoms, and now – you have a bow tie beginning to form. Okay, now take a look. So it's not set up anymore, but yeah, on the next pullbacks along the way, it would be worth trading. Okay, now to follow up on that range thing, I'm not interested in shorting this market here, okay, or even here, because it's kind of in the middle of a a wide and loose range. Okay, but if it's down towards these all-time lows. And beginning to turn around, especially because gold, the commodity, could be a very efficient market 
okay, then I'm looking for that major signal off of those major, major lows as opposed to trying to catch every little zig and every little zag. Take a look at GDXJ. I recommended this a couple days ago, okay. Same sort of pattern going on. These more speculative goals are looking a little bit better than gold in general, and that's the GDXJ. These are the junior gold miners. And you've got a head and shoulders bottom. You've got a bow tie that triggered yesterday there. So this could, and could be this keyword in that sentence, notice your bow tie and a little bit of a pullback, little trigger yesterday. So far today, off to the races, up 5% better than poke in the eye, okay? So, so far, this could be, or this could turn into the mother of all bo of all bottoms in gold, okay? Let's see if I can get my questions back out. Okay, let's get to the, um, let's see something here. Uh, no, we didn't, we didn't lose sound. Sometimes what happens is a squirrel in between me and you um, gets his nuts caught in the wire you know, and then it shorts out, and uh, that could cause the sound to go out or something, especially if he's got a lot of nuts. He's moving at the time. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, it does. You know, check your kids. Are your kids in the other room watching Netflix? It's summertime. You got kids in there? That'll that'll ruin your bad with, ban ugh, bandwidth really quick. Um, most areas looking pretty good. Couple notwithstanding, uh, REITs. I don't like REITs anyway, but REITs gap down recently. Look a little questionable. But what's kind of fascinating with this market is some of these areas that look like they were going to roll over, like utilities, have since come back. Let me see if we could find them for you. Show you that. Here we go, right there. I mean, look at that. Just a few days ago, it looked a little dubious. A couple of weeks ago, it looked a little dubious. And now it's off to the races. In fact, these utilities are trading like momentum stocks all of a sudden. So we might have to pay attention to what's going on. They are transports rallying out of a pullback. So far, so good. Even up a little bit today in spite of a soft market. Uh, semis have been on fire, breaking out to new highs and continuing higher. Uh, let's take a look at electronics. Here we go. Okay, today notwithstanding. But so far, look at that. Nice little breakout. I mean, this is the excitement. This is why I'm getting excited about this market because it's it's like we have a new technological revolution in the works here. All of a sudden, semis are going straight up again. Solar is catching a bid again, okay? So there's a lot of excitement coming back into this market. Biotech, which maybe may have gotten a little ahead of itself, is now coming back in here, okay? Now I'm not going to try to trade it because it's in the it's in between the the highs and the lows, the mid levels. It's at the mid levels now. But heck, if it goes on and bust out some new highs, we'll probably start seeing some setups. And as long as the overall sector is looking okay and in general on its way up for the last couple of months, maybe if we see a little hot IPO in biotechs, we might just nibble at that. Okay, which I'm willing to bet that we will. Maybe in fact, I don't know. I don't. Know, what does AGRX do? Um, is it biotech? Therapeutic. It's got the word therapeutic in there. That sounds like a biotech. Okay, Morton says his connection was the issue. Okay. Okay, um, you know what? I think we could go ahead and open it up for questions on individual stocks. Uh, any questions about the overall market? Uh, silver also real strong in here. For the most part, most areas look pretty darn good. Silver is a little bit... Uh, more wilder and crazier to trade. Do you offer easy payment plan for us poor folk? Absolutely. Um, uh, well, Bill Me Later does. If you go to um, if you go to when you check out, there should be something on Bill Me Later. Okay. Uh, if you're using PayPal. And sign up for that. Not all, not everyone will qualify, but I think they're pretty lenient. And you, you usually get six months interest free if you're looking to do something there. And that's a great way if you want to, because the longer term service is discounted tremendously. Uh, it's it's probably like a, I don't know the math in my head, but it's it's substantially lower if you pay longer term. Okay. All right, Tagu wants to look at Twitter. T W T R. 
as a short. Uh, too many days in the pullback, okay? It kind of looked like a short here, sold off a little bit, but now you've got too many days in the pullback. If anything, it looks like it's trying to bottom out. My problem with I wouldn't want to buy it because I think you got a lot of bad memories in here. And this, to me, looks like a stock where people tried to get off the hook, okay? And they might not have gotten off the hook. And so what ha by off the hook, meaning um, I know we have a lot of foreign uh, not foreign, but non-U.S. Um, people in here. And when I use these uh, cliches and all, I have to explain them. Let me think about this. Uh, people who who are looking to get their money back, p people who bought or owned the, the company back here before it was public are looking to get their money back. And then just look at the charts. Again, the charts are the final arbiter. So I would not look to short this one, but I think it's going to have a hard time uh, going higher. Okay. Oh, uh, Glog. Ugh. We just got creamed on Glog. Well, why do you want to pour salt in my wounds? <laughs> Margin call. <laughs> what he does have to do. Um. This looks like the mother of all shorts. I, I hate shipping stocks usually because <laughs> they're so choppy. But they're 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 getting a bid with energies. Um, it would have to keep breaking out for me to get excited and look to play a pullback along the way. But yeah, we got um, we got punished on that one. Thanks for bringing it up. <laughs> I'm sure you didn't know. Um, Re is a uh, rare earth, obviously. And uh, I love these rare earths because when they go, they go. And, man, do they go. But this one has a lot of, oops, this one has a lot of bad memories, okay, a lot of overhead supply. Um, so it's going to have a hard time rallying in here. Uh, bigger picture, longer term, let's take a look at like a weekly chart. Maybe if it could make the mother of all bottoms and get up to, let's say, 3 bucks a share or whatever, I mean, it would have to get up a couple hundred percent to get rid of a lot of these bad memories before I get excited about it. Let's check on Molly Carp. That's another one that used to, that's an old favorite of mine. But yeah, it's got a lot of Molly Carp's got a lot of bad memories too. Um but one of these days those rare are gonna come back. Okay, A L D R for Mr. John. Uh yep. I'm looking good. Yeah, it looks fantastic. Good eye on that one. Little on the thin side. You got to be careful. But um, yeah, that's a good-looking stock. And um, I see several very tradable patterns leading us up to where we are. And then um, yeah, it looks pretty good. I'll give you a high five on that one. It's on my list. It's ALDX a breakout today. Now I'm not a breakout trader. ALDX. Um, unless it's an IPO, okay, and let me see something. This one might be too thin. Yeah, I mean, this one's pretty thin. So to answer your question, yes, it is a breakout. Um, I do not like to trade breakouts, uh, except there are some breakout type of patterns in IPOs. This one does fit. Okay, but it's very, very thin and would be very, very dangerous to trade. But on a flyer, I hear you, and the answer is yes. Okay, TXMD for Mr. Frenchy. I'm assuming it's Mr. I knew some um, living in the South. I knew some people living in Cajun, Louisiana. Every Frenchy I ever met was a man. Um, it's bottoming, but not off of those all-time lows, and it looks kind of wide and loose longer term, unless it's, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think I'd leave this one alone. I hear you, though. I bet it's a bow tie. Yeah, it's a bow tie. It looks okay. I just wish these lows right here, way down here, I think I'd like it even better, okay? <laughs> All right, Frenchie is a man. That's good. Okay. A -U -M -N. Where are you living, Frenchy? Where are you from? 
Uh, yeah, this is a gold stock or, or certainly a, a mineral stock. Yeah, see, this looks a little bit better than some of those other rare earths and such. This might be a gold stock. Um, it's already broken out, though, and maybe on a pullback. My only concern with this is, and we talked about this in the stock selection webinar, is sometimes you get what I call a bottle rocket, and it does have a bit of a, that bottle rocket look. It's too much of a good thing. And born in South... Carolina. All right, so you're in the states. Gotcha. And in New Jersey now, huh? Gotcha. Sometimes you get these bottle rocket stocks, and they um, there's some blank screen here. It is. They just go straight up. You have one or two, or or sometimes even three wide range bars up, and in this period of time, they go 100 percent or more. Unfortunately, it's hard for them to sustain that and to come right back in. So that's my only problem with that one is it has a bit of that bottle rocket look. It just kind of went straight up in here. So I would leave it alone based on that. But but I have to say, when you back this chart way out, it looks like the mother of all bottoms could be in place. Okay. What is your arbitrary value for thin? It depends. I'm going to cover that in a lot more. In, in IPOs, I'm much more lenient. And it's, it's a long, it's, it would take me a while to explain that. Uh, first of all, if a stock trades 500K on, let's just say, 30-day average volume, or 50, whatever. I think I use 50 now, but 30 days plenty, okay? If it trades an average of 500K, then you could trade that stock. That's got plenty of liquidity, okay? Um, keep in mind, in trading service, I try to stick to more liquid stocks, so everybody has a chance to get in okay as a private trader you can dip below this 500k number uh, it gets very very dangerous when you get below 100k because let's say you come in with a thousand shares okay well now you're one percent of that day's volume so you're becoming a big fish in a little pond so it all depends and if you really really like the pattern and it's it's a little thinner, then by all means you can take it. But somewhere between 250 and 500 is, is, is enough, okay, in general. And with these IPOs, because you have such a limited trading history, you have to be really, really careful. And the one we just looked at just has only trades a few thousand shares on, on, on certain days. So that one's just, I think that's a little bit too extreme, a little bit too dangerous to trade. But in trading is always a trade-off. I spend a lot of time talking about efficiency. The, the thinner something is, the less volume it has, the more inefficient it's going to be, and the, the bigger the possible move um, out of it. Uh, this AUMN is pretty thin. Look at that, 125,000 shares. I didn't even notice that, okay? And it's only uh, like a $2 stock. I mean, you're probably trading 5,000 shares of this stock in here, and now you're 5% of the average float, okay? AAV. AAV. Howard, you're next. Yeah, maybe on a pullback. Uh, it's an oil stock, but but it does have. Now it's a few months, a few years ago, but it does have some bad memories back here. Uh, maybe on a pullback. Okay. Long WB. All right, let's check that out. Um, well, the problem here is you've got this huge wide range bar. It won't let me draw back here. Uh, I, I don't really see any reason to get long this one just yet um, because you don't have a breakout characteristic just yet and without giving away too much. Um, slightly higher priced IPOs with a wide range bar on the first day. Um, I don't want to go, I don't want to, well, the problem is there's a lot of caveats, okay? I, I could say as a general statement, you want to make sure it's above that wide range bar, but there are some caveats within there that I don't want to get into. But um, in this particular case, this stock would have to get above that wide range bar for me to get excited about it, okay? KPTI for Mr. James. KPTI. Well, it's got this just one, see this one bar here is too extreme, okay? Uh, it's got a bottle rocket nature to it. So 
that sounds like I don't know. They some drug got approved or something, and and it might be a one and a done. ZLCS, we do that one. ZLCS reminds me of um, there's like Zalactin or something, which is some sort of it's like a dollar penny stock. This might even be it. It was like a a dollar stock, and you it's a cream. I was in a drugstore once and. The nurse behind the counter, she must she must have been long about 10,000 shares. Everybody came in no matter what. Uh, I'm having this ailment. Oh, you need some Zolactin. <laughs> I'm like, oh, wow, okay. Everybody needs Zolactin. It's kind of like a robot. Who, who did this sketch on uh, Robitussin? Um, Eddie Murphy? You know, Robitussin. Put Robitussin on it. Uh, this is uh, just kind of too crazy. It's all over the place. It gap for like 1 to 160. That's a 60% move overnight. It's got a huge gap down in here. Uh, of course, if it ever got there, it'd be great, but it's got a mountain of overhead resistance. Where can I buy Alactin? <laughs> it's, it was Zalactin, I think is what it was. And, and everybody that came in there, I was waiting in line. Oh, you need some Zalactin. A long trade in STV. All right, let's see. STV. Um, this is one of those crazy China stocks. I think this is on my momentum list. I'm 90% sure that it is. Um, yeah, maybe on a little bit more of a pullback. It's going to be a wild ride, though. It's going to be a little crazy, but I hear you. And that breakout, it's sort of extreme, but not too extreme. Um, yeah, I think so. It's a good-looking stock. I'm pretty sure it's in my momentum list. Let's see. We got time today. Good bunch today, by the way. Let's see. Landry 100. STV. Yep, there it is right there. Let's see when we got in that one. Just for I've got a there's a few stocks that need to be cleaned out of here. Let's see the rice, twelve percent. STV. It's a good idea to keep these um, momentum lists. Well, it's only up eight percent. Let's see what's on the move in here. Because these stocks. I only put stocks in this momentum list at new highs, so I only put them in at B, so to speak. Okay, and this is kind of cool. So you could see these stocks that here are up 70 to 90 percent, and even 40 and 50 percent. These actually went in at new highs, and then you could see where they are from there. I don't actually have a product with this list, but uh, if you guys ever want a copy of it, just shoot me an email. Not every day, but you know, once every month or so, if you want to take a look at it, you're free to do that. I haven't ever decided what to do with it other than it's a great, wonderful exercise. And it, and it shows, you know, because somebody will bring up a little Chinese stock. It's like, hey, I know that stock because it's in my momentum list. All right. ZM wants to know about TBPH. TBPH. Your name seems Chinese. Are you in China? Um, I don't, this is bad data going backwards. I can't, I wonder if I can plot this one on the fly. Let me see if I now nah, take too much trouble to um, to bring up another chart feed. So uh, I'm going to say yeah, that's a good looking stock. Uh, a tiny bit more pullback would be nice uh, in here, but I hear you and it, it looks pretty good. Okay, Don wants to know about new one. Don just woke up. Where you been, Don? Uh, no, you see, you got this. You see, I don't like stocks that make a, a wide range bar. And then kind of meander higher. Okay, I'd prefer to see something that looks like this. Okay, as opposed to this. You get that little wedge higher. I just don't like that pattern at all. We talked about that in the stock selection webinar. On sale now. <laughs> so yeah, I just don't like the way it's it, it broke out and now it's meandering higher. And oh, look at that. No overhead resistance, wide and loose. Oh man, Don, you win. Ugliest stock of the day. <laughs> well, Don's here, and guess what he wants to know about? He wants to know about Ford. Uh, too much overhead resistance for now. It's got to get past that before I would even touch it. Uh, make new highs. You're in. You're from Singapore. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Are you in Singapore now? Howard L L N W L N W for Mr. Howard. Um, you know, I saw this to take off. It's it's kind of interesting in here, but you already had your takeoff. 
and you pull back, and it's sort of triggered in here. Now it's chopping around. So if you're not already long, I wouldn't get long, but I, I certainly hear you. I mean, this thing is bottomed out. Uh, a lot of those bad uh, memories have worked their way through the system. Well, that's, ex that's exciting. I'm, I'm, I'm making it all the way to, uh, that's funny, I'm making it all the way to Singapore, but a, uh, a squirrel got his nuts caught in between a power line between me and, uh, who was that earlier? But somehow I can make it all the way to Singapore. That's always amazing. Tiago, is AAL far from the entry point and uh, pullback? Okay, um, AAL. Uh, my problem, well, airlines, my system here is wait for them to rally and then short them. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's going too far in the pullback. In fact, this pullback had a, a gap in it. So I saw that more as a pioneer short than a pullback that could have been bought or should have been bought. So I would leave it alone. Um, but look at some other airlines maybe, but I, I don't know. They just, they look questionable recently. They all begin to slide a little bit and looks like it was becoming more than a pullback. And then they went right back up. So I'm doing well. YGE for Mr. Frenchy. YGE. Uh, not bad. Let's back the chart out and see what we got. Uh, it's almost coming off of these major, major lows. So that's it's got that going for it. It is a little wide and loose longer term. Let's throw a bow tie moving average in. It's almost bow tied. Yeah, I'll give it a not bad. It's a pretty volatile stock. I, I prefer if it was past this gap back here. But you can see it's going to bow tie soon. Maybe if it could have one more big up day and then a little bit of a pullback. But be ready for a bumpy ride on that one. That's kind of all over the place. AVEO. AVEO. Uh, yeah, shorter term looks pretty good. Let's back the chart out see if we got any problems. Ooh, we got a lot of problems. you got a mountain of overhead resistance here and then a mountain of overhead resistance here. And then this thing just fell out of bed last year. Uh, you know, if all I was seeing was this right here, I'd say, wow, that looks great. It's bottomed out off of all-time lows and looks fantastic. Uh, you know, maybe for a swing trade, but I don't think it's worth it. On every trade that I take, I try to set myself up for both A, a short-term move, and B, a longer-term move. And unless that overhead resistance is... 100% away, or maybe even 50 or 60% away, I won't take the trade. But on this one, it's just too wild and crazy. R-O-Y-L. Is breaking up from a pennant? Let's take a look at that. R-O-Y-L. R-O-Y-L. Uh, no. I don't see it. Let's see something here. No, I mean, you, you see, you just had this, you bought a rocket. You know, it bought a rocket. It, it just took, went straight off, came right back in. This is not a pennant, okay? Um, and I actually call them flagpoles in the IPOs, but um, no, it's not. Uh, I'd leave that alone. It's all over the place. PE for Mr. Albert. I'm sorry, Uncle Albert. Uh, well, it's only, it's a, well, it's a fairly short range in here. Yeah, that's got a deep, yeah, I like, yeah I'm going to give that one an okay. I like it. I can't go into any details why I like it, though. <laughs> that will give away too much. ZBB for Mr. Frenchy. ZBB. Um, no. I mean, it just shot higher. It, it bottle rocketed. It came all the way back in, and now it's just chopping around. So, yeah, leave that one alone, Frenchy. INSM for Mr. Martin. INSM. Uh, no, it's just got this big gap higher. There's no structure there, okay? Um, and it's all over the place. It's up, it's down, it's up, it's down. It's it's, uh, it's electrocardiogram. Don't make me whip out Nicholas. SQNM. SQNM. Let's switch over to water here. I've got enough Mountain Dew. Uh, why do you come up? SQNM? I don't know that stock. S Q and M. There it is. It's another biotechnology stock. Uh no, big gap down, lots of bad memories in here. Okay. Red if I'm gonna like. Red if is um an Indian stock. Andrea. Um every week I wonder if I'm saying that right. 
Now, it is a little choppy and sideways, and I hear, you know, I guess i got to point that out. But shorter term, it's uh, take it off in here. And these Indian stocks look pretty darn good. Uh, if you have time, take a look at some of these Indian, I, I uh, what do you call them, ETFs. And uh, India's on, India's doing great. India's on fire. LLNW, we talked about that one. LLNW, getting some duplicates in here. Yeah, we talked about that one, huh? Um, yeah, it looks pretty good. GSAT, that one's that one's on my list for today, but it's it's um it's almost too much of a good thing. I don't want to talk out of both sides of my mouth. But it went from fifty cents to four bucks a share. What's that? Eight hundred percent? It's already up eight hundred percent. Okay, can it go up another eight hundred percent? Sure. As a technician, I have to believe that. Um, does it look good? Yeah. I mean, am I interviewing myself? I, I think I am. Like um. Who used to interview himself? John McCain. <laughs> Do I think we should have more troops? Yes, I think we should have more troops. Uh, it looks pretty good, and it's still set up. It's kind of a TKO type pattern. My only concern here is just, it's just, oh, it's kind of melted up in here, and one has to wonder how much more can it go. But I hear you. Don already talked about Twitter. That's, you know, that's another stock. No, ZOES. ZOES. I guess I'm going to have to make a rule until we do the webinar. No more IPOs. <laughs> uh, I would leave that one alone. If you're if you're long, stay long. But I would leave it alone for now um, because you already had your breakout pattern. Okay. But if you're long, stay long. APD. That's a good little uh, energy stock, I think. Well, not really. Uh, they probably benefit from energy. Yeah, the, your, your gap's a little bit too extreme for this stock. Uh, it's got, it had a like a ten point gap. It's only got an HV of seventeen, so I would leave it alone. Um, sometimes these big gaps are kind of one and done. HK, HK. Yeah, I want to pull back absolutely, and you do have. You know, this one a while back, I complained about its loss of momentum, but then since I complained, it looks like it's gotten some momentum, and it's almost past some of its bad memories here. So maybe on a pullback, it can be a little choppy at times, but yeah, maybe on a pullback. WLT for Mr. Phil. Uh, no, too much overhead resistance. You want to short it? That's what, a coal stock? I wouldn't short a stock that's already way down here at such low levels, okay? I'd prefer to short them when they're rolling over from all-time highs. I mean, if anything, these stocks could be bottoming out in here, but this one's going to have too much, too many bad memories, too much overhead supply going on. AMKR. AMKR. Yeah, it's in a trend. You know, somebody was emailing me the other day, hey, Dave, is AMK on a trend? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you got to wait for pullback, though. Soon for Martin, S-U-N-E. Uh, nope. No, I would have to clear those prior peaks decisively for me to get excited, then maybe trade pullbacks along the way. AKS, that's going to be an airline, isn't it? AKS, is that Alaska? AKS. AKS. No, it's a steel stock. Okay, never mind. What's Alaska Airlines? Uh, no. What are you seeing there in AKS? Nothing. It's just a big range. I don't see it. Okay. With these commodity-related stocks, you want to try to catch them off the lows, like we're doing with GDXJ, ANV, some of these other ones in here. You want to catch them, like, way down here off of major lows. So you get the mother of all rallies. I mean, uh, I was on a radio show a couple of weeks ago. Well, actually, a couple of months ago. I was back here. And they said, as they're signing off, or signing me off, hey, Dave, give me a stock that'll go up 50 bucks. And I'm like, hey, Andy! <laughs> and that was back here. We caught a little ride in this one up here, but it wasn't great. And then now we're kind of going back to the well. But now it looks like it's a real deal. Well, it looked like it was a real deal back then, too. But you want to catch them, a commodity-related stock, you want to catch them, at major, major lows. Corn from Miss Karen. Hey, Karen, how you doing? 
Uh, no, it just looks like it's going to come down here and kind of bottom out a little bit, but I wouldn't buy it. Um, maybe if it could uh, turn around and go back up. But these commodities, uh, commodities like gold, et cetera, you want to be buying them when they're coming off of major lows. Like back here, you probably had a bow tie, I'm guessing. Yeah, look at that. I got it pointed out. You know, you buy them back here when they're making these all-time lows in the bow tie. You don't short them here because they're at mid-levels. Short them when they're at really high levels like like the bow tie here, okay? But, yeah, they're at multi-year lows. Um, that's probably a, a thing to do. Well, yeah, it's a major low, Karen, but there's nothing to buy. You're, you're not buying the double bottom, okay? And that's the, that's, that's the thing that people get tripped up on a little bit, not you so much, but some people with the methodology, is that we're using classical technical analysis, but we're using a shorter-term pattern as our trigger. So just like we have a head and shoulders bottom in the gold miner juniors, it's the mother of all head and shoulders bottom. We're not going to rush out and buy them just because we've got a head and shoulders bottom. We're buying them because we have a bow tie within a head and shoulders bottom, okay? SLV is going to be silver. And that's the actual commodity. Now, with any commodity, you want to buy off of major lows, okay? So we're at about five-year lows in here, so that qualifies as a major low. All-time lows would be even better, okay? Now, we've got a triple bottom in here. Do we buy them? No, no, not because we have a triple bottom. But why should we be buying silver? Because... Bum, 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 wait for it. We got a bow tie. Okay. Now you got to wait for a pullback now because it's already broken out. But absolutely, keep it on your radar. N G D. N G D. You're welcome, Karen. Uh yeah. You know, on a pullback. On a pullback. You look at that mother of all bottoms. Let's see if that all-time lows. No, see, I prefer if this was all-time lows, but it's still five or six year, uh, year lows. So not bad. But yeah, I mean, you know, you guys are good. you're in the right stocks, guys. Good for you. Or you're on the right stocks, I should say. T B P H. T T B P H. We're almost the lightning round. Um. Yeah, this is the, we already talked about this one. I think that this is um, an old stock back here. I'll have to plot it in a different. Um, uh, can you do me a favor, ZM? Shoot me that T B P H in an email, and then. Um, this afternoon, I'll pull it up in another feed. Okay, we talked about that one. RDNT. RDNT. Uh, wow, look at that. Um, looks like we talked about this one in weeks past. Yeah, it's had a pretty good run. It's kind of like that GSAC. It's like, uh, it's a little late to be getting in it. It's already up uh, 300, 400%. It's kind of going straight up. Um. Now, ideally, I'd like to see it clear this prior little peak in here decisively and then maybe a pullback. Okay, we talked about that one, GSAT. Yeah, we got that one. HRTG. HRTG. Sweet. Yep. Now, that's an insurance company. But, hey, the market is the final arbiter, right? Um, let's take your volume here. Yeah, you've got some decent volume in here. On certain days, uh, wait for a pullback, though. Okay, I mean it, it. It has triggered officially triggered a breakout pattern, but you need to wait for a pullback. Okay. All right, thank you, Zian. No problem, and I'll be happy to look at that for you. Okay, uh, any any other stocks? Well, while we're at an impasse and near the end of the show, I obviously want to thank everybody for for coming. I have a blast doing these as usual. Like I said, I learn a lot in the process. So from a selfish standpoint, it's it's a lot of fun. Um, and I hope uh, you guys continue to come to these shows because <laughs> I have a lot of fun. Uh, any questions? Any any final follow-ups? Well, let me just finish thanking everybody. Thanks thanks for thanks again for coming. Uh, any unanswered questions, daviddavelander.com. Uh, everybody have a fantastic weekend if we don't talk again. If not, uh, I guess I will talk to you next week. Thank you so much. All right, fantastic. We're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Thank you so much.